it's on. Yeah, it's just, it's on. It might be covering the other cameras. I don't think it's on here. Oh, it's not? Yes. Okay. Is that your old laptop? Hey guys, we're gonna get started. You can do it. Has a oh, there we go. All right. You can do anything. Hi, Kelly. Hi, sweetie. Hi, Miracle. God bless you guys. We're going to get ready to get started. We're going to finish up tonight the Orphan Heart versus Sonship. I'm super excited. Sorry, I'm late. I had to go down the hill um, to Loma Linda today. So, um, for one of my babies, God is good. So, doing it from home today. Amen. All right, how's everybody doing? We're going to get ready to get started in two minutes. Good evening. Good evening, Pastor Lisa. God bless you, sister. I need to give you a call. The Lord put you on my heart. I need to call you, give you a call. And also, Kelly, I need to give you a call, too. Both of you guys. Um, God put both of you on my heart last week. And I just, we've been busy with the move and everything. And so, um, just need some... God is good all the time. Amen. All right, we're going to get ready to get started. Let's just begin to pray. Let's just pray in the spirit for about two, two minutes and just welcome the Holy Spirit. Amen. To let him have his way. He's already here because we're here. Amen. So let's just begin to pray and just allow him to come in and have his way tonight as we gather in his name to talk about the orphan heart versus uh, sonship. Amen. And so, Father, we just thank you for tonight, Lord. We just come before you right now, God, and we know, Lord, that you are a good God and you are in control of all things, Lord. So right now, Father, we take authority. I take authority right now. I take authority over every distraction. I take authority over every work of darkness that would try to come against this class tonight. Father, I thank you. This is class seven, Lord. And I ask, Father, that even as seven is a prophetic number, that it will be a prophetic prefiguring, Father God, to your people, that let it be complete tonight. No more orphan hearts, Lord. Let them experience your healing and your deliverance, Father. No more rejection. No more abandonment, Father God. No more trying to earn their way, Lord. I thank Thank you, Father, that everything that we need is already done in the blood. And so, Father, we thank you right now. Let's just begin to pray in the spirit. Just remove all distractions right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Just keep praying. I need to grab some water. <coughs> Thank you, Lord. <coughs> Hallelujah. <coughs> Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, God. Father, we just thank you right now, Lord. Father, we thank you for tonight, Lord. Father, I just pray, God, that it'll be just a time where we just lay everything down from our day, Lord, and that we come into your presence tonight, God, to hear what it is that your spirit wants to say to us, Lord. Father, I pray, God, that our minds will be like a sponge, that we would absorb everything from you, Father God, and that we will be able to pour it back out to someone else, to help someone else. Father, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, God, for every one of your precious children that are hopping on tonight. I thank you, Father, for their sacrifice to even get on, Lord, after having a full day of ministry or work family, whatever it is that they do, Lord, that they are faithful to get on here, Father, as your children. And so, Father, I thank you right now, God, as we... Um, we're going to go ahead and get started right now, and we just cover everything in the blood of Jesus. Amen. I don't want to start too late because we got on here a few minutes late um, because I had to go down the hill today, and so I got a little bit behind, but praise the Lord. The traffic coming up that mountain ain't no joke, but you know what? It was pretty cool today that 
Um, I want to share something with you guys that <clears throat> uh, my brother uh, Josh Rios has sent to me, which was really a blessing. And I didn't really understand the words to this song, but <clears throat> I'm going <clears> to, <throat> this was a song that, that my, I don't know why my throat is dry. Give me one second. <clears throat> oh my gosh. <clears throat> Sorry guys. Um, <clears throat> this was a song that today I was literally climbing up the pass and Josh called and he said, I just felt led to, to read these words. And it, <clears throat> it stuck out to me because <clears throat> this song is not a Christian song. And it's by someone who once was saved and lost their way. But when they sang this song, it was during a time that they were actually walking with God before they went to the left. And <clears throat> I think it was, um, it's called The Climb. Some of you have probably heard this song called The Climb. And it was, um, it, I'm going to just read the lyrics to you. And I want you to just allow Holy Spirit to speak to you. Because sometimes, and the reason why I'm bringing this up is <coughs> God has been talking to me personally about being in a place of being intentional in every moment of our life. We sometimes get so focused on the destiny, so focused on the promise that we lose sight of the journey and embracing the journey, being intentional with our families, being intentional with our children, being intentional with the people that God put around us, being intentional with those that he called us to pour into. Sometimes we get so busy or so caught up in trying to get to the destiny or get to the promise that we lose sight that a part of the destiny and a part of the promise is embracing the journey. While you're climbing that mountain to where God is taking you, that you're taking as many people up that mountain with you that is ready and willing to go. Amen. And that you're not just <clears throat> climbing this mountain on your own, trying to get to a certain point or destination and you've blocked everybody else out. That's not the heart of the father. And so I want to read these words to you because it really ministered to me and I believe it ministered to Josh and I'm sure it'll minister to some of you as well. It says, I can almost see it, that dream I'm dreaming, but there's a voice inside of my head saying you'll never reach it. Every step I'm taking, every move I make feels lost with no direction. My faith is shaking, but I got to keep trying, got to keep my head held high. There's always going to be another mountain. I'm always going to want to make it move always going to be an uphill battle. Sometimes I'm going to have to lose. Ain't about to fast. <clears throat> Ain't about how fast I get there. Ain't about what's waiting on the other side. It's the climb. It's the journey. Amen. The struggles I'm facing, the chances I'm taking sometimes might knock me down, but I'm not breaking. No, I'm not breaking. I may not know it, but these are the moments that I'm going to remember most. Yeah, just got to keep going. And I, I got to be strong. Just keep pushing on because there's always going to be another mountain. I'm always going to want to make it move. Always going to be an uphill battle. Sometimes I'm going to have to lose. I don't believe that part because I believe we got the victory. Amen. Ain't about <clears throat> how fast I get there. It ain't about what's waiting on the other side. It's the climb. Yeah. There's always going to be another mountain. I'm always going to want to make it move. Always going to be an uphill battle, but sometimes you're going to have to lose. I don't believe that part. We got the victory. Amen. Ain't about how fast I get there. It's not about what's waiting on the other side. It's the climb. Yay, yay. Keep on moving. Keep climbing. Keep the faith. Baby, it's about, all about, it's all about the climb. Keep your faith, keep your faith. Whoa. Amen. And so I want to, the reason why I shared that with you guys is because sometimes when you, you see the, the, the promise ahead of you, right? You see it like this. We see the promise and we know the promise is in front of us and we just see this mountain, right? But we forget about the valleys and the, the mountaintops that we have to go through to get to the other side on the timeline of our destination. And so I just want to encourage you guys to really um, embrace every day. Embrace Time is short. Days are, days are shortening up. 
You know, we have so much to be grateful for every single day. We can find a million things that we could be ungrateful for, but we have so much to be grateful for. I mean, come on, God gave you breath this morning. We need to give God praise. We need to open our mouths and praise him. He is so worthy. He is worthy of our worship. He is worthy of our praise. Amen. Hi, Pastor Rebecca. God bless you, woman of God. Thank you for hopping on. Hi, Mama Zella. I just want to tell you, you know, we have so many things that we can be grateful for. And sometimes what the enemy does is he tries to have us trip up on what we don't have or what we're not able to do or what we're trying to get to. But if God says, take the small thing, don't despise the small the days of small beginnings of you know the small beginnings. God will take that thing and He will multiply it and make it work for your good. Amen. And so, don't despise the day of small beginnings. Allow God to take whatever He put in your hand and multiply it because of your faith. Faith is the currency of the kingdom. God will multiply it in your favor. Amen. So I just want to share that with you guys really quickly. I hope that blessed you. If that bear witness with anybody, please just let me know. Put that on the comments. That that bear witness with me. And we're gonna go ahead, huh? That was a song my mom said. Yeah, yeah, from back in the day when before she got demonically possessed. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. But it's all good. We're gonna pray for her. I know her dad, her dad was a man of God. And and so you know, sometimes people lose their way, but you know what? God's grace is for them. Amen. God can turn that thing around. Jesus said that what the father desires that none should perish, not one. And so if that's God's heart. That should be our heart for people, even those that are lost that we see. You know what I mean? I mean, how much more can God I see so many people right now, even artists right now getting radically saved, people that came straight out the trenches. God can do it, you know, and we're intercessors. We're called to pray. Amen. We're called to pray for them and love on them. Amen. And so let's be those that intercede and not just walk around in judgment because what would happen if they, I mean, I look at where I came out of. And then think about all the people that God has used me to save, to heal, deliver. He used, I was just a vessel that he used. What if I wouldn't have got saved? What if someone didn't believe in me? What if someone didn't pray for me? I mean, think about that. I can't even tell you how many people. It's been hundreds and hundreds of people. It could be even close to thousands. It's been 20 years. And so I don't know, but it doesn't matter about the numbers. What matters is that that somebody didn't give up on me. And so we need to continue to pray and intercede for people. Amen. Set healthy boundaries. Pray for them. Love on them. Continue to believe God for their miracle and their breakthrough. Amen. All right. So let's get started, y'all. We're going to um, finish up tonight on uh, being an orphan versus being a son. Being an orphan versus being a son. So last week we covered... Um, the orphan lifestyle and the orphan heart, the orphan lifestyle and the orphan heart or the orphan heart, which is like the orphan spirit. So we went through that. We broke off. Um, we went through, I think we did rejection and abandonment. And I think we also did, um, we talked about what the lifestyle looked like. We talked about Adam and Eve. So if you guys were not with us last week, for whatever reason, please go back and watch um, last week's class. Everything is on there. And so, and then we, we went ahead and we talked about uh, different purposes and needs for prayer. We went through um, slavery to sonship. We talked about going from being a, a servant to being a son. And so, so anyway, if you want to go back and you definitely want to uh, make sure that you take all that in, go through, we have some, um, some uh, healings that took place. Um, during the class. It went really well. God is good. Praise the Lord. And so we're going to keep going tonight. So tonight we're going to cover being an orphan versus being a son. And there's three states. And I want you to write that down on your notes. Three states of being a Christian. There's three states of being a Christian. Okay. You can either be in a place of a prodigal. You can be a place of sonship, or you can be in the place of the older son which was the one when we talk about the prodigals, remember the older son that he was off to the left or to the right, right? You can be in a place of being the older son. So we're going to talk about that according to um, Chester Kelstra, how he talked about this when he did this teaching on RTF. Okay. And so we're going to talk about the father's love. Amen. So if you want to write down, oh, praise God. If yes, if you guys, Pastor Rebecca says so many testimonies from last week, I need to send you one from someone I sent the video to. Oh, praise the Lord. Oh, praise God. That makes me happy. Amen. That makes me so happy. Oh, Vic, do you have Vicky Gonzalez on here too? 
I'm Pastor Rebecca. Tell them to put their names down. I don't know about them all. Okay, can you guys put your names down in the comments? Um, Amber's taking all the attendance right now. So if you guys could please do that, that would be a great, great help. Look at Mama Zella is back. She's on here. She's typing up notes. Look at God. I love you, Mama Zella. That's my heart. That's my mama, y'all. Y'all keep her lifted up. Amen. She is coming home soon. Ashley is on. Hi, Ashley. Hi, Ashley. So we have Kelly, Ashley, Zella, Rebecca. Um, let me see who else we have on here. All right, y'all. I just disappeared. I don't know what just happened, but praise the Lord. We have Pastor Lisa on here, Greenwich, and we also have Veronica Lopez, Miracle Kai. Um, let's see who else do we have on here. Yeah, today was a long day with traffic, you guys. I mean, I feel like the last three days I've been traveling from LA to back and forth. I'm like so done driving right now. All right, so Veronica Lopez, um, Kelly Lawson. Let me just really quickly go through the ones that we have on right now. Zella James, um, Vicky Gonzalez, Rebecca Solara, so, Solorio. I don't always say her last name wrong. That's Pastor. Just put Pastor Rebecca. And then we have um, we have Ashley, and we have Veronica Lopez and Miracle Kai K A H L. And then we have um, Erica Furiola's on. Hi, Erica. Hi, sweetheart. Okay. And I think that's what we have right now. I see 20 people on here, but I don't have 20 names. So if you just hopped on, please put your name in the comments. That way we can um, make sure that we get you down for class tonight. All right. So this is class number seven, y'all. Y'all have been rocking for seven weeks. God is so good. Amen. All right. So the first state that we talked about, so we talked about three different states of being a Christian um, as far as what the RTF um, training is, is, is teaching us. The first state is you could be a prodigal son or daughter a prodigal. So write that down, a prodigal. The second one is you're in a, you're in a state of sonship. You're in a state of sonship. And the third state is you can be in a state of the older son, right? When we talk about the older son, we're talking about the two prodigals. And remember when the prodigal came back and the older son that had been there serving the whole time was mad, like, how's he going to get the fatty calf and the the ring and the jacket and the coat of many colors and all this different stuff. And I've been here all alone. So that's the state of the third person. Okay. And so the father's love being in the center, how does the son see the father in comparison to how an orphan sees the father? Okay. So how does a son see the father in comparison to how an orphan sees the father? So this is what we're going to talk about tonight. And I want you to write down a couple questions. <clears throat> I want you to ask yourself. We have um, Marie Melendez. Hi, Marie. God bless you. Marie Melendez is on. Okay. And so we want to ask ourselves a few questions. I want you to write this down. <clears throat> and I want you to I want you to write it down, but I want you to put con comments in here because I want to see where everyone is at. And there is no right or wrong answer. Please don't say the answer that you think is right. Really answer from your heart. Okay. The most honest that we are, the, the more freedom that we get. Amen. And so where am I in this? Where am I in this? Ask yourself this question. Write that down. Where am I in this? Okay. Where am I in this? Okay. What, where am I in what? How does a son see the father in comparison to how an orphan sees the father? So where am I in this? I want you to ask yourself this question and I want you to answer the question now and then answer it at the very end of the lesson. And I promise you, you're going to have a different answer. Amen. The second one is where do I have a child who has place? Where do I have a child who has place? Okay, just write that down. 
You can use this as a gauge. You can evaluate yourself. Where am I in this journey from being an orphan to becoming a son or a daughter of the Most High God? Becoming a child that has place, has an identity, has security, settled in knowing who you are as a son or a daughter of the Most High God compared to be an, an orphan, having to take care of yourself. So if you have a mindset of, I got to take care of me because ain't nobody else going to take care of me. I got to do what I got to do. Okay. That's a, that's an independent mindset away from the father. But if you understand that you're a son or a daughter, yes, you do what you have to do that God has given you the ability to do, right? But you still put your hope and your trust in God. You don't just sit there and twiddle your thumbs like, oh, I'm a son or a daughter and I don't have to do anything. No, faith without works is dead. Faith is the currency of the kingdom, amen? And so you begin to operate by moving in your faith. You begin to do the work and you trust God to do the rest, but you're not independent of him. You're doing it in him. You're co-heirs with Christ. You're walking this thing out, the Holy Spirit in you, and he's leading and you're following, amen? And so an orphan sees God as a master, just somebody to obey, somebody to serve, not necessarily somebody to have a relationship with. Whereas a son would see God as a loving father. Amen. You would see him as a loving father. You won't see him as it's just my because if you've had a father that gave you a whole lot of rules and not balanced with love, then you might look at the heavenly father and think that that's how he is. And that's not what it is. We're not on the page right now, guys. We're doing a lesson. We're doing a lesson, um, an RTF lesson. So we're going to be in the book, and then we're going to shift to different lessons that that will kind of interject with where we are in the book. Amen? So we'll be doing like some healing and deliverance as we go, and then we'll you know go back and forth with the book. Amen? And so when we do start back with the book, we'll be on page um, 17, The Power of the Cross in a Christian Life. And so that's why we're talking about where do you stand before we go into that teaching. I want to really begin to hone in on where do you stand as a son or daughter? Are you connected to the father as your loving father that you can run to for safety and shelter? He's your provider. He's your protector. He's your shield. He's your high tower. He's your buckler. You run into him. He covers you in the shadow of his wings. Are you in a place of God is like a dictator in my life and I have to listen to him and obey him. Otherwise, I'm going to go to hell. Or if I don't, if I don't, if I'm not a good girl or I'm not a good boy, then I'm not pleasing God or he's not going to love me. That's an orphan heart. I'm going to get in trouble with God because, you know, if I get in trouble, because maybe when you were a child, your mother or father, they always were on you. And the only time they gave you any type of love is when you did something good. That's not how our father operates. I don't care if you in the gutter. I don't care. Like when I used to be, man, didn't even know God. Did not even know him. I thought I knew him, but I did not know him. I would be in a straight gutter and God was loving on me and I would feel his presence. And I wasn't even repentant and saved yet. He was calling me out of the trenches. Do you hear what I'm saying? Out of the dirt, out of the muck and out of the mire. Do you hear what I'm saying? He's a loving father. There's nothing you can do. I'm going to say this with everything in me, Lord, make it clear, make it plain. There's nothing you can do to earn his love more than he loves you right now. There's nothing you can do to take his love away from you. There's no height, no depth. You hear what I'm saying? There's no devil, no demon, no sin. There's nothing you can do to make him stop loving you. When you get that revelation, you don't want to sin against him. When you get that revelation, you don't want to you don't want to be disobedient to him. When you get that revelation of the love of God that he has for you, that he laid his life down for you, that you were the hope and the joy that was set before him to go to the cross. My God, that that is enough to just wreck your whole everything. Just to know that, man, I may have messed up yesterday, but God's grace is right now. Does that give me a reason to keep messing up? Absolutely not. God said it's better for you to be obedient than your sacrifice, right? You need to be obedient to God, amen, because he loves you, amen? It's not a reason for us to, to fall short or to, or to make excuses in life because we want to abuse the grace. Paul said, no, with grace abounds, come on. 
where sin is, grace abounds even more. Why? To pull you out of that, to see that his mercies are new every morning. Amen. He's a God of the first chance, the second chance, the third chance, the fourth chance, the fifth chance. He gives you so many chances sometimes that it just will blow your mind and a religious spirit won't understand it. And then they'll forget what they came out of. You hear what I'm saying? But the mercy of God, the grace of God, he never gives up on you. Do you hear what I'm saying? He's always right there calling you. I'm at the door. I'm standing at the door. Open the door, son. Open the door, daughter. Walk in. Let me sup with you. Stop doing everything in your own strength. Learn how to be still and get in my presence. Allow my anointing to cover you and the favor of God to rest upon your life so I could take you where you need to be and where you got to go. Amen? Amen? All right, so... When we are in a relationship with God, we understand that as an orphan, an orphan sees God as a master, just somebody to obey, somebody to serve, not necessarily someone to be in covenant relationship with. Whereas a son would see God as a loving father. No idea of protocol, just love him and let him love on us. It ain't even about protocol when you're loving on your papa. Amen. You can just go right there with them. You don't have to, come on, you don't have to do this ritual or the veil has been torn and the curse has been broken. Yes, you can come to God and I'm not saying come to him all crazy. I'm not, no, you need to honor him and reverence him with the fear of the Lord. We need to declare Isaiah 11 and two over us every single day. Lord, I thank you for the spirit of the Lord, for the fear of the Lord, for wisdom, understanding, counseling, and might, knowledge of God, release over me, amen? that I reverence you, that I don't just come to you all, all familiar. No, he's your father, but there's still an order and there's still respect, but there's no protocol when you come to him. You come to him like a little child, you run into his arms and he's right there to just to grab you and to hold you and to love on you. You know, all the stuff you're going through, we got to learn how to worship. I got a nugget this weekend and I just want to share with you guys. I shared it with our team. The Lord was telling me, he said, he, what did he say? He said, just love on me and worship me. Don't come to me and worship with all your requests. Sometimes we come into worship. God said, worship me in spirit and in truth for who he is. When we worship him, we're exalting who he is. Oh, God, I thank you that you are El Shaddai, you are Elohim, you are my loving father. I thank you, Papa, that you love me, God, that there's nothing that can separate me from the love of my Papa. He loves me. He loves me. He loves me. Lord, I thank you for your love and embrace. I thank you for your grace and your mercy. I thank you, Father, that you fight every battle on my behalf. I thank you, Father, that you're turning everything around for my good, Lord. I thank you for your love and your grace and your mercy. I thank you that you went to the cross, you didn't have to do it for me. Amen. But you did. He did it anyway. Amen. And so he wants us to be able to enter in in spirit and truth, being naked before him, just laying out before him because he knows everything about you. You don't got to say nothing. He already knows. But when you're worshiping him, you're ministering to him. You're telling him about him. You're loving on him. You're ministering to him. And all oh, he gets so pleased by that. That just, it just blesses him. Can you imagine all the people on the earth? How many people? We have what over, I think seven, is it seven billion or trillion? I don't even remember Eight. anymore. Eight billion. Eight billion people on the earth. I think when I was in college, it was five billion, y'all. We didn't went up by two more billion. That ain't been that long. I know I'm almost 50, but it ain't been that long. You hear what I'm saying? God is good. And so just to know, <clears throat> that all these people on the earth come to him. And some people don't know, but yes, you cry out to him. You make it in Psalms 142, David cried out to God. He made his complaint known to God. Yes, when you're praying and you're sup, you're sup, you're um, lamenting before him, you're crying out before him, you're pouring your heart out. Yes, God is there, but we got to know how to worship him in spirit and truth. That's when we just come before him and we just, we don't, we're not thinking about nothing that we need, nothing that we're going through. It's just, God, I love you for who you are. Do you know that in that place in his spirit that he will begin to work out things and give you favor and work stuff out that you never even had to ask him about because you were in that place of worship? 
you got up off this first level and you didn't deal with the second level, but you went up to the third level in the, in the kingdom of God, right? You were in the third heaven where you're already seated in heavenly places and you're right there with your papa and loving on him and letting him love on you. Amen. Yes. He knows the number of hairs on our head. Yes, he does. See, he does. Yes, he does. And you are the apple of his eye. You're the apple of his eye. Amen. So I hope I'm just encouraging somebody right now. There's no protocol when you go to your father. There's protocol in the kingdom, but there's no protocol when you go before your papa. Just go and let him love on you and you receive his love. In Hebrews 4, 16, it says, come boldly into the throne of grace to receive mercy and help in the time of need. Think of a little child running into the throne room and jumps onto his daddy's lap. When I read that, it blessed my whole life because I've always had this vision for 18 years. Uh, when I see the father sitting on the throne, when I get into heaven, I'm going to just run. And because I'll be in my glorified body, I'm going to just be doing backflips and just lay in his arm like, ah, because I used to do gymnastics. Amen. And so that's just like the vision I have. Like I'm going to backflip and just, just sit right in his arms. Amen. That's me. That's my childlike faith with my daddy. Amen. And so be in that place with him. Let him love on you. There is a place for respect and acknowledgement that God is God. He wants us to love him and receive his love for us. That is seeing God as a loving father. So an orphan in terms of position says, I am a slave and a servant. Let me ask you, are we slaves and servants? I want you to ask yourself, are you being a slave and a servant with God? So yes, we are bond servants of the most high God, but we are also sons and daughters. So like the bond service back then, they would put a piercing in their nose because they didn't want to leave their master. They chose to stay when the slaves were free to go. And this is in the word of God. And they allowed them to put a ring in their nose to pierce them, to say, you know what? I choose to stay here with you. So yes, I'm a bond servant of the Lord. I'm bonded to him. Amen. But I'm still a daughter. Amen. So I respect my father. I love my father. He loves me. I don't come at him crazy, but I can come to him about any and everything. And he hears me. He, your, your emotional state, he wants to heal. He wants you to understand that he loves you. Amen. You don't have to come to him oh, the way that you don't talk. I hear people pray sometimes, oh, Father God in heaven and hallowed be thy name. You don't say hallowed be thy name. Why are you hallowing it him? <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. You don't say these and vows when you talk to me. So why are you then and thou in your father? When you talk to your earthly dad, do you thee and thou him? No, just be you, be normal. <laughs> I'm sorry, like no religion. Like just, you don't have to give the father Christianese. Remember, he is the one that created the 66 love letters that we read called the Bible. Amen. <laughs> Pastor Lisa laughing. Amen. So let's just let's just be normal. Sometimes we get so like we don't even realize we've been church. It's like that that um what's that guy name from punk? Uh Ashton Kutcher. Ashton Kutcher. You know, I said I've been punk. We've been hoodwinked, y'all. We didn't got church and so we didn't got religious, and we we start saying things that we don't even say when we talk regular. Like just be normal. Like he just wants you to come to him and just be you, amen. Amen. I know you guys already do all that, though. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. So there is a place of respect. So as an orphan in terms of position says, I am a slave and a servant. So we are bond service of the most high God. But let's go to Deuteronomy 8. And, it, and we are also sons and daughters. Deuteronomy 8 talks about being a bond servant in exchange of giving my whole life to my master. The master takes on the responsibility of taking care of me, providing a place for me to live. Amen. That's what he's done. Jesus said, I go to my father's house with as many matches. I'm going to prepare a place for you. Amen. And I'm going to come back for you. Amen. Because he is our master, but he is our loving father. So we can come to him and just be who we are, be naturally supernatural. Amen. That we can be organic and authentic and be you. He loves the way he created you. You're not supposed to be like nobody else. The only person you're supposed to model is Jesus. Amen. You're supposed to look like him. 
pray the way that he called you to pray. Don't try to pray like your leader. Don't try to copy somebody's tongues. You got your own heavenly language with your father. Amen. Woo, I felt that on my head right now. That was for somebody right now. Be who God called you to be authentically and organically you. Amen. You are more than enough. Amen. And he loves you just the way that you are. In terms of dependency, an orphan is very independent, self-reliant. An orphan is very independent, self-reliant. A son is interdependent and submissive. Okay. So sometimes we think it's the opposite, but it's not. If you are have an orphan spirit, you're very independent and self-reliant. You depend on yourself. You self-reliant. You're independent. You don't feel like you got to, you know, no. When you're a son, you're interdependent. You understand and know without God, you can't do nothing. You know, without God, you a whole hot mess. Do you hear what I'm saying? Without God, man, you it, it's a wrap for you. Amen. You know this. So you submit to Holy Spirit. You go before him and say, God, this is what I got on my list, the, what I need to be doing today. But Lord, I give you my day. And I say, Lord, have your way with me. I embrace you. And I thank you for those divine appointments, divine encounters. Don't let me be so busy in my day that I miss the broken heart standing next to me. Don't let me be so busy in my day that I neglect the person on the corner that was about to take their life. Don't let me be so busy in my day. Okay. Do you hear what I'm saying? Amen. All right. So let's keep going. In terms of theology, the orphan operates from the love of the law. There is a place to love and know the law and with the power of the Holy Spirit to fulfill it and obey it. But the son has the law of love. He operates out of love and does things out of love. Amen. So we're not doing things out of obligation because it's a law right? We're doing it out of the love of God in our heart, right? In terms of security, the orphan is insecure. They have no peace and there, and there are burdens. They have burdens and all types of anxiety, always on the defensive, protecting themselves, watching out for those mean, nasty people out there in the world. <laughs> Amen. Lots of walls, lots of walls. No, all relationships and friendships are surfacy. No deep relationships, no brotherly love, no phileo, no agape, no hesed. Come on. They're just kind of, everything is surfacy. Oh yeah, yeah, that's my brother, my sister. We have fellowship, but never really going into deep things. Okay, God called us not to be alone, that we could talk about the deep things of the spirit, that we could talk about the deep things in our soul, that we can connect one to another, Amen. We're supposed to dwell in harmony together as the body of Christ. Amen. In unity. Amen. All right. So where was I at? Whereas a son operates in rest and in peace, expects the best out of everybody. And when there is occasional wounded person that hurts them, they understand that they were once there themselves. They forgive and they operate from a place of being healed. So they're not, they're not, broken and breaking people. They're not bleeding and leading, right? They're not hurt people, hurting people, rejecting people, rejecting people. What they are is they're whole and they understand. I know this is going to, I could feel that right now on my back. There's a lot of people on here that are ministers, right? You guys, you guys are pastors, prophets, leaders. Um, you have, you have, you have a whole congregation that you're leading and pastoring and you understand what that means. You understand that the confession of our faith has to be father, forgive them. They know not what they do. When somebody come to you and cuss you out for something, or they come up to you and they lie on you or they, they misinterpret because they're wounded and they hurt and they gossip and slander about you, but they still won't come to church. You got to still love them, right? You got to still love on them and you can't begin to punish them, right? You have to still be able to love them. Sometimes you got to have people sit down and, and they got to get healed, right? But, and don't get me wrong. Yes, there's correction. Yes, there's rebuke in love. There should still be in love. We should be able as leaders to be able to speak the truth, but in love with the love of Christ. Amen. Does that make sense? 
She said, wow, that's deep. Amen, Marie. God bless you, sweetie. Amen. And so whereas the sun operates in rest and peace and expects the best. So I want to ask you, when somebody wounds you and they hurt you, how do you respond? Do you speak the truth to them in love about the situation? I know it's uncomfortable. I hate doing that. But it's necessary, especially as leaders. You cannot walk around offended with people. Amen. We have to be able, and even if you're not in a place of leadership yet, because I believe that everyone at some point in their life, you're called to lead something, whether it's your household, your, at your job, your church, whatever it is, we're all called to preach, pray, and prophesy. I don't care if it's in the line at McDonald's or at the Walmart. Amen. Whatever it is, you could be at Macy's. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Wherever you are, God will use you if you are open and allow Holy Spirit to do that. Amen. And so do we forgive? Are we quick to forgive and operate? from a place of being healed. And I know when we have spiritual children, we go through things with them because they're, God has entrusted them to us because they're walking through things that we had to walk through. So sometimes things might catch you off guard, but then you have to be able to love them and embrace them and say, you know what? I've been there. So I'm going to, I'm going to love you through this thing. I know where you're at. I've been there before. So I'm going to show you how to look to Christ. I'm going to show you how to go to Jesus for everything that you need, not come to me because I'm just a person. Amen. And you can hear God just like I hear God. Amen. I can pray with you and agree with you and direct you into the path of God. But as I'm following Christ, follow me as I follow Christ. And then you're going to be following on your own. Amen. And so in terms of need for approval, an orphan seeks the praise of man which leads to striving, insecurity, performance, and seeks the approval of God, okay? They read so many Bible verses a day and memorize so many. There is like a duty to perform in order to be accepted and be approved of. So this is a person that if you don't affirm them constantly because they weren't affirmed by their parents on the earth, they're always looking for you to, to feed that affectation inside of them, right? No, we're not called to do that. Yes, the God said give honor where honor is due. But God tells us in his word and he affirms us in our identity. So we don't have to keep getting a pat on the back or every time we do something, oh, thank you so much. Oh, you're so great. You're so, no, we don't have to do all of that. That's too much, Right. OK, but we want that. Our flesh wants that because there's a broken part of our soul where we want that. Right. Because we didn't get it from mom or dad or or from our spouse or our children. And we felt like, you know, nobody cares. No, nobody loves me. I'm neglected. No, the devil's a liar. God is with you. And he says that you are fearfully and wonderfully made, created in my image and my likeness. There is no greater affirmation than the affirmation of the father over your life, what he has spoken over you, what he sings over you. Jesus sings over you. He's forever making intercession for you. He is the high priest. Amen. So we don't, we don't have to be in a place where we're broken and we're looking for people to feed the brokenness inside of us. When we can go to God to feel those broken places and heal those broken places and get in the word of God to do that. Amen. Yes, I do believe that we say thank you and we tell people we appreciate them. Absolutely. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But when you know what I'm talking about, when it gets to a place where if they don't get praised all the time, then they feel like they're doing something wrong or they, they, they feel like it's, you know, always that nobody doesn't um, appreciate me. And it's always about them. Jesus said, deny yourself and take up your cross and follow after me. Amen. I hope this is helping somebody out right now. It's a fun refresher for me too. Amen. Praise God. All right. There is a duty to perform in order to be accepted and to be approved. Amen. Whereas a son just rests in the father's acceptance. You just know you already accepted and you love. There's nothing that we could do to be accepted and love. You already are. You are already. You are justified by the grace of God. And the son does all those things because it is so neat to get to know daddy better. Amen. And the fun of getting to minister to other people through the power of God's Holy Spirit operating through us. We don't do it as a duty, but as a privilege. We don't got to do it. Did you know that? 
Did you know you can still go to heaven and you didn't even have to do all of that? But we get to. It's just like when we celebrate the feast of the Lord. We don't have to. We get to partake of Yeshua. Amen. And so motivation for servants. They're motivated by need of personal achievement, which leads to fear of failure in God's eyes, which leads to a just rejection. It's a just rejection, guys. And so what does that mean? That means this person is so ambitious. They're doing one thing, going to another thing. They don't even, there's no stability because there's an identity crisis there. They haven't received the love, the rest, and the peace of God. So they're always feeling like they're, okay, what can I, I got to do something else. I got to, like, I have to earn it. I have to, I have to, I'm going to miss it. I'm, no, no, be at peace. Rest in God. He knows you. He loves you. Amen. We get to. Amen, miracle. She said, we get to. Yes, we get to. We don't have to. We get to. Amen. Praise God. So with the son, so we are we are back to shame, fear, and control. Remember, we went through all of that last week. We broke that off of people. Shame, fear, control, rejection, and abandonment. And so whereas a son's love precedes service. Service is motivated by deep gratitude by a loving father and that we are loved and accepted unconditionally by our father. I do not serve God because I have to. Amen. I serve him because I want to, because I love him, because I owe him my whole life and because I'll do it from a place of love, not because I'm obligated to do it. Not because if I don't do it, I'm going to get in trouble. Absolutely not. I serve my father because he's my heavenly father and he saved me and I love him. And it's my privilege and the honor to serve the kingdom of God, to serve God, to love God, to love people. I'm not doing it for nobody to pat me on the back. I'm not looking for my apostles to pat me on the back. I have a father that does that. Amen. I'm not looking for my spiritual mama to pat me on the back. Amen. Amen. I have two spiritual mamas, Dr. Carell and, and Dr. Judy Bowers. Those are two spiritual mamas to me. Okay. Pat, Apostle Kim and Carlos, they're like, they're like mamas and dads to me too, but they're more like big brother and big sister to me. Like I can go to them about anything and they're right there, you know, and I love them so much. Amen. But it's not just them. I have a whole host of people that I can go to godly counsel, healthy relationships. Amen. I know I could go to I could go to Kelly about anything. I can go to Mama Zella about anything. Amen. I could go to Leanne about anything. I can go to Josh and Jackie about anything. Amen. That's that's healthy relationships in the body of Christ. God wants you to have that healthy relationships. Amen. I can go to Mahesh about anything. Amen. That's 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 what God wants. He wants us to have the 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 unity of the faith in the body of Christ, where we could come together and be real and be ourselves. Amen. All right, let's keep going. Thank you, Lord. We sometimes tell people as a receiver, get out of works. When they are trying to get out of works mentality, what would God do if you went out and sat on a log for the rest of your life and did nothing in terms of service for the rest of your life? What about God's love? What would happen? That usually is an incredibly difficult thing for them to ponder. They thought of them sitting and not doing anything is so out of their box that they can't even comprehend it. So we try to begin to help them comprehend it. I know some of y'all got that religious thing up in there. Like you're like, I got it. If I don't No, you are loved by God. If you didn't do nothing, but just spend time with him every day. He still love you. He not going to he not going to say shame on you. No. Yes, we serve him out of a place of love. Amen. We serve him out of a place of love. Oh, Pastor Celeste, I have you on here, too. I'm going to write you on. Amen. All right, so let's keep going, guys. I, is this blessing, y'all? I hope that this is like kind of opening up some things. Some of you probably already know all of this, and that's great. But if you don't, I pray that it's kind of open you up to see so that we can get out of this works mentality and get into relationship, into sonship. You're a daughter of the Most High God. 
You're a daughter. You're a son of the most high God. If you feel like I got to do this, I got to come on. I was so, I'm going to just say right now, I was so happy and proud of my husband on Friday. He gets up at midnight and goes to the food bank and will stay there in the cold. Oh my gosh. To the point where I'm like, Lord. And I was so happy that on Friday, he didn't go till five in the morning. And I know them religious demons did not like that. They're like, no, I need him to go at midnight and sit there and freeze. No, you don't. And guess what, y'all? He went five hours later. He was able to rest. He went to the food bank. He was number 12 versus being number six in line to get the food for the food ministry because there's there's like 80 partners that we have, right? And he got out of there and was still was able to get to the church and was only like 30 minutes later than what he normally would have been or to an hour. Come on. Like that was resting in peace and in God, like showing you, like, come on. Like, yes, there's times that we got to do a whole lot. Trust me, I get it. I understand that there's work in the ministry. Please don't take this like you just not work. If you're called to the ministry, you are called. It says he calls some to be apostles, prophets, evangelists, and pastors, and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry. That Read Ephesians 4, 11 through 32. That's our verse that we stand on for KC Hub. Amen. For Kingdom Advancement Center. But know that faith without works is dead, but there's a place of rest where you're not striving to the point where you are just doing things in your own strength. We're out the rest and the peace of God. There's a difference between covenant relationship and I'm resting in this versus I got to do this because if I don't do this and I'm going to miss it or if I don't do this and I'm a no, no, we're going to get set free tonight. Amen. All right, let's keep going, guys. Um, They know in their head that God would still love them, but in their heart, they don't. Great fear rises up. What would God do if you just sat on a log and just loved on him and let him love on you? <laughs> God loves you unconditionally. He loves us unconditionally. I follow up with the saying that God would probably be disappointed because he has this incredible destiny for us and all these fun things for us to do. If we just sat there, we would miss out on all that God has for us. Amen. But we don't do it to earn his love or to keep us from him, from him hitting us with a lightning bolt. We do it out of a heart of gratitude and for fun because it's fun to serve God in the kingdom. The Christian life is supposed to be adventurous, a fun life. And if it isn't, you need to look at it and ask, what is the matter here? What did you used to do? God told me the other day, go back to the first words. Go back to your first love. He's taking us back to our first love, right? Think about when you first got saved, that fire in you, right? Where you would talk to anybody and everybody about Jesus. You gave them the good news. What was the good news? Oh my gosh, this is what God did for me. Like, this is the good. I want you to know that my... My, my father. Amen. I want you to know Jesus. Amen. See, the enemy has come to wear down the saints, to bring disunity. To a, the, He says that a, a house divided cannot stand. He came to bring division. The enemy has tried to come to, to separate us from the love of God. He's a liar. He cannot do that. Amen. So we have a heart of gratitude, a heart of thanksgiving. When you wake up, what is your attitude? Are you like, Lord, I thank you for another day. I thank you, God, for giving me breath in my body. I thank you for my family. I thank you for a roof over my head. Lord, I thank you, God, for everything you have for me today. Lord, I come against everything the enemy would try to send against me before I even put my feet on the ground. Lord, I take up my armor this morning. Father, you cover me. Amen. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. Why? Because your rod and your staff, they come for me. You prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemy. My cup runneth over. Come on. Woo. Just began to just declare and decree. Yes, she said worship music. Yes, get in worship. Wake up praying in the spirit. Amen. You ever did that while you're sleeping? You're coming out of a dream and you're just already in the spirit. Your spirit is already awake and your flesh is trying to catch up. Amen. 
All right, let's keep going. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. We don't do it because we want to earn his love or keep him from hitting us with a lightning bolt. We do it out of a heart of gratitude and for the fun. The motive behind Christian disciplines, duty and burden versus pleasure and delight. Duty, I want you to write this down. What is your motive behind your Christian disciplines? Is it because you have a duty? You have to read your word today or you're going to get in trouble or you're not a good Christian? Oh, that's really good, Maureen. Yes, she says she listens to prayers when I'm falling asleep. They have some amazing, um, I love listening to the water or to the river streams um, while I sleep at night or healing scriptures. You can listen to things like that. Sometimes we just put on, um, like, I love listening to Nehemiah when I sleep at night or Revelation, stuff like that. Just put it on and just play it lower. Like when you're in your house, I know I heard Benny Hinn say, just leave worship playing in your house 24-7. Even if it's low, even when you leave home, just keep it playing 24-7. Amen? All right. So what is your motive? Is it duty and burden? Are you doing it because you got a burden and, a, and it's a duty? Like you got you to gotta do it? Or are you doing it out of pleasure and delight? Are you doing it because I get to do this? Because I love my papa. Amen? Motive for purity. Why do we want to be holy? Why do we want to be holy? What is your motive for purity? Must be holy is driven by ever increasing guilt and shame. So if you feel like I got to be holy, I must be holy, like I got to, it's a command. <laughs> no, that's guilt and shame all over you. And usually because of the judgments involved here, we get more and more driven into sin that is involved where we, to, to medicate the pain. So we get involved in sin to medicate the pain because there's guilt and shame there. Whereas we want to be holy, we don't want anything to hinder our intimate relationship with God. When you have a relationship with God, you are holy. So what is the motive behind your like you being holy? What is your motive behind you being you having Christian duty? It should be pleasure and delight. Amen. Everything should be motivated out of the love of God. For healing and deliverance ministers, others may, but you may not. This is for healing and deliverance ministers, okay? Others may, but you may not. Things other Christians can do that you just can't do. You have to set boundaries. God is protecting us, okay, to bring healing. He's protecting us. There are other things that Christians could do or choose to do, but can hinder our ability to bring healing to other people. Amen? There's probably a lot of freedoms that you could have and different things that you can do, but you know when the Holy Spirit is nudging you, lie, you can't do that. Amen? Doesn't mean you're not strong enough, but don't let your good be spoken evil of, right? Evil company corrupts good habits. You can see it as protection and a boundary or rebel against it. Amen? So you don't want to rebel against what God is trying to do to protect you. Amen? Amen? Show us, Lord, what we need to. So I want I want us to take a minute and we want to just take a moment right now. And I just want you to pray with me. And I just want you to ask God the question really quickly. I'm going to read 2 Timothy to you, um, 2 Timothy 2 and 24. So if you want to write that down, 2 Timothy 2 and 24. And I'm going to read it out of the Amplified Bible. And it says, um, there we go. The servant of the Lord must not participate in quarrels, but must be kind to everyone, even tempered, per preserving peace. And he must be skilled in teaching, patient and tolerant when wronged. Amen. 2 Timothy 2 and 24. 2 Timothy 2 verse 24. I'll write it here. I want you guys to write that down and I want you to read that. You don't, you're not supposed to get caught up in, in uh, all these different arguments and quarrels with people. In 2 Timothy, I think it's 3, 9, it tells us, don't get caught up in arguments and debates with people about your faith. Don't cast your pearls before swine. We in the end times, you got to ask God to give you discernment and wisdom. Everybody don't need to know what God is doing in your life. 
God will cause you to build silently. That's where I'm at right now. God's just having me build things silently. And until he tells me to say something, I just have to do it silently and just make moves as the spirit of God tells you. Everybody don't need to know your every move because everybody is not for you and it's okay. But everybody don't need to know every move that you make. Everybody don't need to know everything that's going on in your household and in your family. Everybody doesn't need to know everything about you. God will give you those that you can trust, that you can do that with, but it's not for everyone. Amen. We have to have wisdom in this hour. And I know when you have a big heart, it's hard, but I want you to ask the Lord and we're going to just pray right now. Okay. I just want you to take a moment and pray. And I want you to write down what Holy Spirit shows you right now as I read this to you. Okay. Show us, Lord, what we need to, so we can be fit instruments in the master's hand. Show us, God, we want to be holy and not hinder the relationship. We want to be holy with you, Father, and not fall into sin because we're trying to be holy in our own strength versus out of a place of intimacy and relationship. So I want you to write down if there's any sins in your life. You don't have to put it in the comments. This is between you and the Lord. If there's any sins that you're struggling right with right now or anything that is going on in your life and you know that deep down in your heart, And it's because you're trying to be holy, but you're doing it in your own strength. It's not out of a place of intimacy, a presence and relationship. Amen. Just write those things down. And and I want you to practice his presence every day and just get in the presence of God. Like I could feel his anointing right now. So strong. It's from the inside out. It's not something that you work from the outside in. He lives in you. So it's from the inside out. All you do is just, Lord, I thank you, God, for your anointing. I thank you for your presence, God. He's in you. Amen. So write those things down. Imagine, I'm sorry, what is the image of yourself? What image do you have of yourself? We compare ourselves to others, a form of self-rejection and a setup for jealousy. Okay. I want to read something to you guys. The Lord had me uh, pull out. So when we operate with rejection, okay, when we operate with rejection, we step into addictive behaviors. Okay. Okay compulsions. We seek acceptance. We feel unworthy. We battle with withdrawal. We isolate ourselves. We have shallow relationships. You don't want nobody to get in. You don't want people to know who you really are, right? Loneliness. That's the spirit of rejection. You want people to think you're more holy than what you are. You want people to think you're more pure than what you are. You want people to think you're you know, you don't, they can't know the real me because if they know the real me, they may not like me. I don't feel close to God as I used to be. I think my compassion is dim. Hmm. So, Marie, you need to ask Holy Spirit to reveal to you what came in to harden your heart towards God and towards people. I just heard the Lord say there was someone that didn't show you compassion and then it turned your heart to a place of not having compassion. So just when you spend time with Holy Spirit, just ask Holy Spirit, Lord, I give you my heart. I give you the unforgiveness. I give you everything that was done to me that even felt like a betrayal. Father, I choose to forgive them. They know not what they do because I know the weapons of my warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds because I don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but principalities and powers and rulers in high places and spiritual wickedness. So Lord, I give you these people and I choose to love them. I choose to bless them. I choose to forgive them. So now, Father, I ask that you would help me. There you go. Amen. She said, yes, Lord, I will forgive them. Yes. It doesn't mean what they did is right. But when you have unforgiveness, do you know that it keeps you bound and it causes roots of bitterness in your belly? Oh, let me tell you what the stronghold of bitterness does. It brings resentment, racism, unforgiveness, anger and hatred be grudging, violence, revenge, chronic grumbling and complaining and presumption. So if you are dealing with bitterness, every time you're around somebody, you're pers- you have a presumptuous spirit. Like God said, cast down every vain thought, imagination, false perception. Don't perceive things, every false prejudice, everything, bring it down to subjection to the authority and obedience of Christ. Amen. When we walk with jealousy, we're walking spiteful. 
We have gossip and slander. We're talking about what somebody wearing. Why? Why are you? Why are we talking about our brother and our sister about what they have on? It's just like petty stuff, right? We should just be loving on them. Betrayal, critical nature, judgmental, suspicious. We always think somebody talking about us. We walk in a room, we think everybody just talked about us. <laughs> That's a jealous spirit, amen? Unchrist-like competition. There is a such competition that's healthy, but this is an unchrist-like competition where you feel like somebody going to outdo you or they're going to outgift you or they're going to outrun you or they're going to take your position. No, your position is on your knees as a son and a daughter. Amen. And we need to master that. Amen. Cruelty. Cruelty. Those are all the different things that come in with jealousy. Okay. And then we also talked about, there was another one on here. Um, it, bring, it can even bring in, so we talked about fear, shame, and control, right? We talked about fear, shame, and control. Fear, shame, and control can be connected to manipul manipulation, striving, lack of trust, the devil's advocate, you always got something negative to say, insensitive to people, desiring recognition, seductive empowerment. You're seducing people to be empowered, cursing, emotional outburst schemes in a motor mouth. You just da -da 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 -da. always got something to say, right? All right. Um, and yes, there are people that have a genuine heart that talk a lot and there's nothing wrong with that. But these are little, just little things I want you to pay attention to. All right. So let's keep going, guys. We're going to keep going. All right. What time is it? 9.13. All right. We got 45 minutes, y'all. We might get out. We might get done sooner. We'll see. We'll see what happens. All right. So, so do you compare yourselves to others as a form of self-rejection? And a setup for jealousy, or do we, or or we are fully loved and accepted just the way that we are? Do you know that you are fully loved and you are accepted just the way that you are? You can look in the mirror and say, "Wow, God loves you, and I love you too." Can you look in the mirror at yourself and say, "Wow, God love"? I do that all the time. I when I'm brushing my teeth, I'm like, "Girl, God love you. I'm His bookie. Amen." <laughs> I'm his boo and he's my boo. Amen. I love the Lord. You got to know that that is your daddy. He loves you. He's so good, y'all. He give me parking spaces in the front everywhere I go. All the time. I just pray, Lord, can I have favor with my parking space? I don't want to walk away from the back or I'm in a brush, whatever. He always does. He's been doing that for years. You have favor with God. You have favor with man. Amen. All right, so let's keep going. Um, sure, you're not perfect, but that's all right. None of us are. We are on a journey of becoming more and more like Jesus Christ. That takes a lot of pressure off, and there's no way you can fail now. So if you are just trying to be like Jesus, you love yourself, you love God, you know that he loves you, you receive his love, you know that you are fearfully and wonderfully made, you are the apple of his eye, he knows every hair in your head. There's nothing you could do to be a good girl, like you had to do with mommy and daddy, to be a good girl to win his love. He loves you already, more than enough. There's nothing you could do to earn it. Right. And so that right there is freedom. That right there takes all the pressure off. It's just like when you pray for someone, it's not my job to save nobody. It says, wise is a man that wins souls to the Lord. I can't save nobody because none comes to the father, least they be drawn by him. So if he puts somebody in front of me, I know that God drew them there. So whether I'm the one that's sowing a seed, I'm watering it, God's going to bring the increase. So the pressure is off of me. Because I don't have a heaven or hell to put nobody in. Amen. There's no pressure. There's no pressure. Okay, put Francine on here. Hi, friend. Francine is on here. Um, I don't know. Did you have her on there? I didn't see her on there. Mm -mm. Okay. And so if you guys are on here, please make sure you put your name in the comments so we can get you down. Okay. We want to make sure we have everybody. I think we have 15 people and there's like 23 people on them right now. So um, make sure that you guys put your name in the comments, but there's no pressure on us. We could be free. 
because it's not, the pressure is not on us. You're just a yielded vessel saying, Holy Spirit, flow through me, use me, use me for healing, deliverance, salvation, God, to just be a, a shoulder to cry on. Father, use me, Lord, to bless somebody. Father, show me what to do. Use me to intercede for this person that is broken and they need answers and clarity. God, help me to be used by you. Amen. And it take, you can't fail in that place. There's no failure. Comfort. Let's talk about comfort. An orphan seeks counterfeit affections through addictions, compulsions, business, escapism, and hyper-religious activities. I want to write that down, okay? Hyper, oh, Pastor D is on to put um, Dessa Waller on there. Hi, Pastor D. I got a missed call from you, sis. I was down the hill. I'm going to give you a call. I'll call you after class, okay? Love you so much. That's my sis. All right, so let's go to. Um, I want to. I want to pull up the definition of this. I want you to see escapism. Okay. It's a way of distracting your mind. So you just want to escape instead of dealing with self. And God wants you to face your feelings, your emotions, the things that you're going through, your pain. The only way we heal, we don't just keep going forward in pain. You got to take a breather and stop for a minute and say, wait a minute. My mind is not in a good place. I'm thinking all this negative stuff about everybody. I'm I'm hurting when I get around people. I'm expecting them to do this or that. And when they don't do it, I'm hurting right now. I got an orphan seeks counterfeit affection. Oh, okay, yes. So let me go back. So comfort, we're talking about comfort. So an orphan seeks counterfeit affections through addictions, compulsions, business, escapism, and hyper-religious activities. Any way that we as an orphan think is a way to survive and get along in this world, we will pick, we will pick our favorite poison and go for it. So we're in survival mode. We're not thriving. We're not in a place of peace. We're not resting as a son or daughter, but we're feeling like I got to survive and I just got to do this to be able to, to make it through. I got to, I got to, I got to fake it till I make it. No, you don't. That's a lie from a religious spirit in the pit of hell. Amen. You don't got to fake anything. God never called you to fake anything. Yes, he says, speak those things that be not as though they are, but you don't have to fake nothing with your daddy. He love you. Amen. And so what is escapism? I'm going to give you some examples, ways of distracting our mind, not dealing with reality, social media. Okay. So what do we do? We numb the pain. Sometimes we don't want to deal with it. Or sometimes we have so much pain and comparison and jealousy and all these things that we feel like I'm, I'm I can't, I'm, you know, I'm not where I think I should be because you're not embracing the journey. You're so focused on the destination, right? But God is saying, be, be intentional right now. Let me use you right now. If you embrace the journey day by day, step by step, I'm going to use you for my glory. And before you know it, you'll be at your destination. Then you go home to glory. Amen. So why are we rushing to try to get to our destiny? When you get to your highest destiny, your life most of the time is fulfilled because you've reached your highest level of purpose. Amen. Look at Jesus. He embraced the journey as he was a child and 12 and he was in a synagogue and all, all of the religious leaders were astounded by him and all of the, the philosophers that were in the, in the temple, right? And then he had three years, you know, he went, he did the Sermon on the Mount and that was his declaration before he went into ministry for three years. And he reached his highest level of destiny on the cross. Look at the apostles. Look at what they did. It was, it was the highest level of destiny. Amen. All right. So substance abuse is another thing. People want to escape in drugs and alcohol and sex, pornography, watching movies that are demonically possessed movies or paranormal stuff because they want they want uh, power or the supernatural without being in the presence of the supernatural God. They're looking for an escape route, right? 
playing video games to avoid thinking about or facing something that they need to face, such as maybe relationship conflict or a stressful assignment that they have a deadline on. Why do people do these things? It's a disadvantage, right? And so when we look at that, we, we also look at, um, it's a tendency to seek, to, to seek distraction and relief from unpleasant realities. Unpleasant reality. So we escape in our mind and we, we don't want to deal with it. So I'm going to just scroll, scroll, scroll on my phone and I'm going to watch all this different stuff. Or instead of dealing with my reality, I'm going to watch all these reality shows about someone else's stage life reality because I think that I'm partaking of their life because I'm not happy with mine. No, the devil's a liar. God loves you and he's called you for such a time as this. He understands everything that you're facing and that you're going through, those things that you can't tell nobody about but him. He knows and he's right there and he's saying, get up. Get up again. Get back in the game. Keep fighting. Rest in me. Accept my love. Practice my presence. Stay in my peace. Amen? Hyper-religious activities. My God, we know what that is, right? Just always busy doing stuff, right? Hyper, just, you know, any way that we as an orphan think it's a way to survive, to get along in this world, we will pick our favorite poison and go for it, okay? It's just like with uh, Chester, with RTF, he talked about how he grew up in the wild, wild west, and he said there was a, they had a cowboy billy bar, <laughs> And they would say, what poison do you want today? When they would go in the bar, what poison do you want today? You want to drink some poison today. You want to pour some poison in your body, right? What sin would you like to have as your favorite besetting sin to cover up the pain? The best way is to get healed. And it's funny because when I did this teaching before, I put overeating. That was where I was at. I used to be almost 400 pounds. And so I would overeat, not even realizing I was I was taking food for comfort as idolatry. And I want to share with you what idolatry is, is worldliness. Idolatry is worldliness. It's worldly values. You get frustrated. You're hopeless. You're greedy. You're selfish. You have financial problems, wrong goals, decisions, living a lie. You're apathetic. You don't really, you know, pleasure in wickedness. And, and just all these different things. You're going to something else to give you comfort. When Jesus said, my father is sending the comforter and your helper, which is the Holy Spirit. Well, we should be going to him to get the comfort and the healing that we need versus going to the thing. Amen. So I want you to write down, what's your advice? What is the thing that you use to cover up the pain? What is it that you do? Do you use like movie binge with bonbons on the couch? And I'm serious. Do you go to an all you can eat buffet? All you can eat sushi? That was my thing. All you can eat sushi. Oh my gosh. It really was. Like, what is it? When I was in the world, when I used to be addicted to marijuana, I would just get high, get high. I thank God for deliverance. I've been delivered since November 27, 2006, y'all. Praise the Lord. Come on. Woo, woo. Thank you, God. Amen. You go to horror movies. Yes. And see, this is the thing I want you guys to understand is write this down. I want you to write down the word entertainment. Write down the word entertainment. Entertainment. Entertainment means I detain you in a position while something enters you from the screen. Did you know that? So it says the heart of the author is in the worship, right? So what is the heart of the producer of the movie that you're watching? What is the heart of the music that you're listening to? What is the heart of the author? Because that's what you begin to worship. I know that's an ouch for people that like scary movies and paranormal and, you know, all this stuff, right? Jesus said that we are supposed, well, you know what? It's not even in the word. Jesus told me this personally. So he said, I've called you to set judges around your gates. 
your eye gates, your ear gates, your nose, what you smell, what you touch, what you take, every opening on your body, there's seven gates. God said, I have called you to set judges around your gates. And what is the judge? The word of God. It's not he going to set them around. No, he says, I called you to do it. You set the judges around your gates. So I want you to ask yourself this before you watch a movie. Would Jesus sit here and watch a movie? Why would I watch a movie that instills fear in me? Think about it. When God says, I didn't give you a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. We do not allow our kids to watch scary movies. Why would I, if I'm teaching my children to walk in power, love, and a sound mind, which is self-discipline, which is what discipleship is, because disciple, the, the root word of that is discipline, right? You're a disciplined one that walks with Jesus, amen? And so in that place, why would I watch something that's scary, that's going to instill fear and bring the spirit of fear in my home when I'm trying to fight against the spirit of fear? Any fear, it could be fear of the future, fear of failure, fear of demons, fear of torment, anything. But I'm welcoming it in my home. God says, repent, renounce it, and get it out and shut. Uh, put a wall around that gate, set a judge around it. Um, what about watching lustful things or listening to music? Why would I listen to music that is talking about fornication or adultery? When Jesus said that that's an abomination to him because sexual morality is a sin you do against yourself. Why would I open myself? Oh, that's just good music. Oh, I like the beat. No, it's lustful. Amen. Why would, oh, I could go into so many different things right now. Why would I listen to music talking about smoking marijuana if I knew that God delivered me from that? Mm -mm. No. Right? So I just want you to think about that. Said judges, there are amazing movies on Pure Flix. I love Pure Flix. I am an advocate for Pure Flix. I'm not that big on Angel Studios. Only because... I do like chosen, but all of, because I know how to sp eat the meat and spit out the bones, but I wouldn't because there's everything in that is not a hundred percent Bible. And, um, there's a, there's a, a, a motive behind it, which is Catholicism and, and, and coexist, coexisting. Right. So, yeah, sorry. That's just my opinion. You do whatever you feel led to do, but that's just me. Okay. All right. Let's keep going before I get in trouble. Um, <laughs> whereas the son daily seeks rest as a son of God, you seek rest daily and comfort in the loving arms of your father. We go running into that throne room and run up to his lap. Right. So that's just like. I don't know what it is, but when I spend time with him, I just cry. I went to the Oasis um, Ministries concert. I took Jackie on Sunday after church um, for her birthday, and we got wrecked. They were like, this is not a concert. It was at the Way Church. It was just not a concert. They were like, this is an encounter, and it was literally an encounter. And y'all don't speak Spanish, but the Holy Ghost was giving me an interpretation of what they were saying in Spanish. And I told Jackie, did they just say this? She's like, oh, my gosh, yes. Did they just say this? Because I kept asking God, I want to know what they're saying. But she loves them, so I went there with my friend to be a blessing. But God bless me. Y'all, I was, man, I was dancing and weeping and crying, and it was just so powerful. It was a straight encounter. Amen. I don't know why I told you that, but oh, I know why we go to the father running into the throne room and run up into his lap. That's how I felt like I like every day. That should be where we are. God, I just want. Um, she said I was seeing that, too, with the chosen. Yeah, it's a lot of people that. Yeah. I know. And it's such a good show. It is. But there's like certain things where the Holy Spirit is like, you know, that ain't true. You know, so I can't promote something that I know is not truth, right? All right. Relationship with others. An orphan is in competition. Did you know that? An orphan spirit is always in competition. I got to get there before everybody else because if I don't, then versus I need to get there because I'm supposed to be there at this time. You rest in the responsibility. It's not... I'm doing it because I want to serve or I got to do this or that. You need something, baby? I need a water. 
A water bottle? Okay. There's some over there. By the coffee thing. Do you want to say hi? <laughs> say hi. This is my nanny. Say hi to everybody. Hi. This is our baby. Our little biscuit. All right. So I'm going to keep going. Um, an orphan is in competition. Rival, rivalry. Rivalry. Let me look up rivalry. I know what rivalry means, but I want, I could barely even say the word right, but I want to. <laughs> I know we know what it means. It's like competition for the same objection, superiority in the same field, competitiveness, competition, um, contention, opposition, conflict, struggle, strife, feuding, dissension, discord, antagonism, friction. Woo! That's a whole lot. Candidates running for the same political office are political rivals. Amen. You know that song, you have no rivals, right? Now I forever God you reign, right? You know that song, right? All right. So, so anyway, let's keep going. Um, I don't want to get on rabbit trails tonight. I need to stay focused. So rivalry. An orphan is in competition, rivalry, and jealous of others, success and position. God said, rejoice with those who rejoice, weep with those who weep. So we should not be in competition or be jealous. We should be like, you know what I mean? Happy for them. Oh, she left out, friend. I'll let her know when I go in there afterwards that she said hi when she comes back. Um, a son is in a place of humility and unity, values other people able to rejoice with their successes. If you don't get the new car and your friend get the new car, be happy for them. Your car is coming, right? Or if you, if, uh, if, you know, someone gets a promotion at their job and you wanted that promotion, but they got to be happy for them, even though I might be like, oh man, but you know what? I'm, I am happy for you, right? You can still celebrate. You don't have to be in a place of jealousy, right? Um, or if you see someone get married and you believe in God for a marriage, be happy for them. Be happy for them. Your husband or your wife is coming. Amen. So a son is in a place of humility and unity, values others, is able to rejoice with their successes, grieving and weeping. They weep with those who weep and they rejoice with those who rejoice with them over their failures and their losses. Laugh with those laughing and weep with those weeping. I wrote a note down. We have much more bonding as a family when we are all sons. See, if everybody got an orphan heart, people are not connected. You'll see it in church. I've seen it in our church before, right? When there's like an orphan heart, people don't know how to connect. Everybody is kind of like surfacy, right? Instead of going deep and just having that, that love and that relationship. Not with everybody, but there's just certain people that I've seen that before because they're still getting, they're still walking through healing and deliverance, Right? And so when you come to a place of unity, then you don't have, you don't have an orphan heart, right? When you come into a place of unity, you can celebrate each other. You can have deep, intimate relationships. So we're going to talk about the Absalom spirit. You know what that is, right? Absalom was uh, um, David's son, right? And he came into a place where he felt like he was entitled and he had jealousy of his father. He felt like he was superior to his dad. He had pride. It was just a whole lot going on with him, right? And it was not of God. It was not of God, okay? He was like in a place of spitefulness, gossip, slander, betrayal. He was critical, judgmental. Uh, he didn't have, he, he was cruel. He didn't have a Christ-like competitive heart. He had an un-Christ-like competitive heart, right? And it was not good. It worked to his own demise. So handling other people's faults, I'll put you down so I will feel better about my own shame. So if you've seen somebody that they going through something, they feel bad or whatever they're going through, and they're steady talking about someone else and they're putting them down because so they can feel better. Whereas a son will cover, love covers and seeks to restore in a spirit of love and gentleness. Galatians 6 kicks in here. Let's go to Galatians 6.
This is where we bear one another's burdens. And so I'm going to I'm going to teach you something about Lashon Hara today. The Lord was speaking to me about Lashon Hara. That's a Hebrew word, Lashon Hara. I'm going to write that down. And I want you guys to Lashon Hara. Okay. And we're going to talk about Lashon Hara after we go through, what are we on? Um, Galatians 6. Read Galatians 6. And Second Timothy 2, 24. All right. So we're going to go to Galatians 6, where it says, bear one another's burdens. It says, brothers, if anyone is caught in any sin, you who are spiritual, that is, you who are responsive to the guidance of the spirit are to restore such a person in a spirit of gentleness, not with the sense of superiority or self-righteousness, keeping a watchful eye on yourself so that you are not tempted as well. Carry one another's burdens and in this way, you will fulfill the requirements of the law of Christ. That is the law of Christian love or hesed, which is love and kindness. Hesed is C-H-E-S-E-D in Hebrew. It means love and kindness, or it could be agape love, phileo. Agape love is unconditional love. Phileo is brotherly love, right? For if anyone thinks he is something special, when in fact he is nothing special except in his own eyes, he deceives himself. But each one must carefully scrutinize his own work examining his actions, his attitudes, and behavior. Remember, we talked about the mind, that your mind, your brain, the way it works is what you believe is what you think and is how you behave. So you have to change your mind to change your life, right? So then your mind has to be renewed with the washing of the word in the word of God. When you renew your mind and you speak those things that be not as though they are, you believe the word of God, then your, your mind, your spirit is growing big, it's getting bigger than your flesh, your so and everything begins to line up with the spirit of God inside of you. Amen. And then he can have a personal, the personal satisfaction and inner joy of doing something commendable without comparing himself to someone else. So you don't have to compare. I'm not comparing myself to nobody. I know who I am. I know whose I am. I know the anointing on my life. I know what God called me to do. He called me to healing and deliverance. That's just what it is for me. He called me to be bold. He called me to be a warrior. He called me to stand for the line of the tribe of Judah, literally. And he also called me to war. That's what God called me to do. Someone else may not be called to that. They may be called to something else. He called me to, to, to bring forth the word of God and to teach people about breaking generational curses because that's what he did for me, right? But you have to ask God in preaching the gospel of Jesus, what is the special assignment? What's your specialty? Like, are you the OBGYN doctor? Are you the podiatrist? Are you the, are you the um, endocrinologist? Are you the, you get what I mean? What is your specialty in the kingdom? Every one of you have an anointing and a specialty in the kingdom. Amen. And so for every person will have to bear with patience his own burden or faults and shortcomings for which he alone is responsible. So I'm not responsible for your shortcomings and you're not responsible for mine. You're responsible for your own mess and I'm responsible for my own mess. And you take accountability for it and stop blaming other people because I'm going to tell you something about cycles in the body. When people go from this place to that place to that place and every place they go to is everybody else's fault, I promise you it's not everybody else's you right? And so God wants you to be accountable. He wants you to look at your stuff. He wants to heal and deliver you. But if you keep blaming everybody else for your stuff and not dealing with the pain and sitting there and allowing God to show you yourself, God says, what does that mean? That means see yourself. He wants you to come back to who you are. See yourself. Amen. Look in that mirror and don't forget what you look like when you walk away. Amen. The one who is taught the word of God is to share all good things with his teacher, contributing to his spiritual and material support. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. He will not allow himself to be ridiculed nor treated with contempt nor allow his precepts to be scornfully set aside. Absolutely not. For whatever a man sows, you hear that? If you sow in discord, guess what's going to happen? You're going to bring discord to yourself. Amen. For whatever man sows this and this only is what he will reap. If you sow in love, you're going to reap love. 
If you sow in blessings, you're going to reap blessings. If you sow in discord and disunity, then guess what? If you sow in gossip and slander and talking about people and dishonoring them, guess what's going to come to you? Amen? So we need to be careful about what we say. For the one who sows to the flesh, his sin capacity, his sinful capacity, his worldliness, his disgraceful impulses will reap from the flesh ruin and destruction. But the one who sows to the spirit will... Uh, will from the spirit reap eternal life. So let us not grow weary or become discouraged in doing good. God wants you to reap eternal life. Amen. For at the proper time, we will reap if we do not give in. So when, so then we will, as individual believers, have the opportunity. Let us do good to all people, not only being helpful, but also doing that which promotes their spiritual well-being and especially be a blessing to those in the household of faith, which are born again believers. Amen. And so that is what we just read. So let's go back to the word. Um, love covers, help them be restored. And sometimes people can be so wounded that they don't even want your help. And it's okay. You just intercede and pray for them and love them. Amen. And when you come in contact with them, just show them the love of Christ. Our condition of being orphan is one of bondage to all these fears and have tos. I have to do this. I got to do that. No, you don't. The son walks in liberty and freedom and gets to choose his boundaries. Yes, I, I set boundaries. You have to be able to set healthy boundaries. When God shows you something, you need to you need to walk in the love of Christ. You don't cut people off, but you have to set up healthy boundaries for you, for your family, for your anointing, for whatever God has on your life. And there's nothing wrong with that. Amen. I am going to choose not to go off into that area of sin because I love the father too much. In sense of God's presence, it is distant for an orphan, close and intimate for a son. So in a sense of God's presence, someone who cannot feel God's presence, they say, I can't feel God. God's not here. No, there's a tangible presence when you are in the presence of God, when you are a son, there's a close and an intimate place with him, right? So what would you rather be a son or an orphan? I'd rather be a son. Amen. Orphans don't trust, but sons do trust. Orphans don't trust. Occasionally trust so fractured and broken that they can't move out of older son legalism and protocol. So what is the older son? Remember we talked about the sonship and we talked about the orphan, right? We talked about the prodigal son. We talked about the son. And then we talked about the older son that operated in legalism. Okay. Why does he get the same wage as me when I've been here all alone? He the one left and went and spent all the money. Now he coming back and you giving him favor. What? No. God says that it don't matter if you've been having your hand to the plow or somebody new came in and put their hand to the plow. It doesn't matter. Y'all all get the same wage. Why? Because long as God said this, is, if God told you you're going to get $15 an hour, then you agree to $15 an hour. You working for $15 an hour for five years. That's your business. If somebody else come in five years later and they get to make $15 an hour, and they were only there for a couple of days. Then why are you mad? Because God said they get the same wage. That's the word of God. Amen. Ouch. All right. Lack of identity. The place from the abandonment feeds into shame and fear arises. Fear losing place. Here we have already lost place. We don't have any place yet. We have a fear of losing whatever we do have. And we are fearful that people will discover that we really are a mirage, that we really are hiding behind a false face, this cover up. Ouch. So that leads to control to try to keep the identity in a place that we already have or to try to get somebody else's if we can, where we still kill and do the things and all types of things. And that's what the enemy does, still kill and destroy. So now we're being an ambassador for Satan, right? So shame, fear, and control is very much a part of the orphan lifestyle. Okay, take notes. Okay, I want you to take notes. 
I'm going to write something. I want to read some things to you. And I just want you to take some notes down. We think other people have place and position and we've been, we've been trampled over. Okay. What are the four ministry areas, right? We're going to talk about the sins of the fathers resulting curses. We're going to deal with the ungodly beliefs. We're going to deal with the demonic oppression and we're going to deal with the soul spirit hurts. Amen. So if you have a person who has a rebellious spirit, a spirit of rebellion is self-willed. They're stubborn. You can't tell them nothing. They, I know their response is always, I know, I know this ain't my first rodeo. I know I've been there, done that. I wrote the book, bought the t-shirt and burned it, right? Um, uh, insolent, pouting, strife, um, factious, divisive, anger leads to argument, independent, unteachable, ungodly influence, and lawless. They're unsubmissive. They have resistance. Anytime you try to tell them something, there's there's feedback. There's resistance, right? Self-reliance and interdependent and independence. All right. When we deal with abandonment, we're talking about rejection, a wanderer, like a nomad spirit, like a gypsy, fatherlessness, restlessness. The orphan has fear, control, victimization, anger, unfair. They feel bitter and they fester on it. They fester on the things that have happened. Amen. Okay. Um, and I want you to know something that when you're coming out of the orphan spirit, you have to know that it's not going to always be one way all the time. God will switch things up and rely on Holy Spirit. Okay. Rely on Holy Spirit. So a lot of times with the orphan heart, there in Leviticus, there's a curse that they talk about in Leviticus. But when we pray, we want to pray against fatherlessness homelessness, loss of inheritance, curse of illegitimacy. Ill, how do you say that? Illegitimacy. Ill, <laughs> illegitimacy. I think that's how you say it. Um, uh, uh, orphanship. Uh, maybe they came out of the foster system. They felt abandoned. Uh they haven't, they worked really hard to eliminate, to eliminate, um, all legal ground. So, so this is a person that they feel like I have to work to make it happen. I have to do it instead of doing it from a place of love and a place of, of favor and a place of inheritance as a son, right? So you're doing what you're doing, trying to earn something that Jesus already paid the price for you to have. My God, I just felt that. Amen. Okay. So right now we're going to go through and we're going to do some prayers. We're going to do the sins of the fathers and resulting curses. And then we're going to break off some other stuff. So I want you to get into a place where you're comfortable right now. Amen. Let's go ahead and get to a, a place where you feel comfortable, where you're not distracted. Um, and I want you to start writing down some of the things that were named that kind of stood out to you, okay? Any of those things that stood out to you, right? I want you to, to write those things down. Okay. So I want you guys to just repeat after me. So I'm going to pray and then we're going to get started. Father, I just thank you. I thank you, Father, for tonight. Lord, I thank you for freedom and breakthrough tonight in the name of Jesus, Lord. Father, I thank you. And I don't know who it is. I keep hearing this over and over. And there's somebody that is going through something with their dog at home. Who is that? There's somebody I want to pray for your dog. There's some put your put, say it's me in the comments. If there's something going on with your dog at home, I've heard it like two, three times already since we've been on the live. God wants to heal your dog or, or bring your dog home. I don't know what is going on with this dog, but there's something about a dog right now. Okay, just put it in the comments and we'll come back to it and pray for the dog and see what God is saying. Amen. All right. So it says, I confess. So I want you to repeat after me. Father, we just we just thank you. Let me pray. Father, we thank you right now, God, for every single person who is here. Father, I bind all demonic manifestations that will try to come to hinder them from freedom. Anything that will try to make them yawn, go to the bathroom, uh, get into a coffin spell. Father, anything that will try to come to hinder them 
from hearing and receiving what you would have yourself to say to them tonight. Father, I thank you right now. And Holy Spirit, I say, have your way, God. Do what only you can do. I take authority over every work of the devil against your people, God, in Jesus' name. And I thank you for a wall of fire around me and around this place and around every person on this live in Jesus' name. Set a wall of fire in your glory within, Lord. Cover, cover, cover everything that's broken in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And so just repeat after me. I confess the sins of my ancestors, my parents, and my own sins. The sin of and the curse of fear, control, rebellion, abandonment, fatherlessness, victimization, and anger. I choose to forgive all of my ancestors and all others who influenced me to move into these sins and allow these curses to move and operate into my life. I forgive them today. I release them and I no longer blame them in any way or expect them to pay me back. Now, Lord, I ask that you would forgive me for each and every way I have received these sins and curses where I've allowed them to influence me where I base my life on them, my God, or kept you at arm's length and other people you have brought into my life to represent you to me. Lord, I receive your forgiveness. Woo. And now forgive myself for allowing all these things to influence me. Amen. I now renounce the sin and curses of an orphan spirit and an orphan lifestyle, the orphan heart, and all the various sins and curses that have undergird that lifestyle and held it in place. I break my agreement. I want you to say with your authority, I break my agreement today with the orphan lifestyle and the orphan spirit. I dismiss all demons that I have given legal ground to and that I have helped hold me to this lifestyle in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I now receive your freedom from this lifestyle. I choose to become a son or a daughter of the most high God. I receive today all that you have for me. I receive my complete inheritance. Yes, just say that I receive my complete inheritance in the name of Jesus, hallelujah. I receive the destiny that you have for me. Tell them I receive it by faith right now, now, no delay, now in Jesus' name. I receive the loving relationships that you have for me now, no more walls, walls down now in Jesus' name, amen? And now I open up my spiritual eyes and ears for you to give me. I'm sorry, I said that too fast. Now I open my spiritual eyes and ears for you to give me any spiritual gift that you want me to have. As I become your son and your daughter. Let's see and let's see for what God wants. Okay, so right now, I want you to get a pen and a paper 
And I'm going to ask right now for you to write this down. And I want you to declare this over yourself for the next 30 days. Every morning when you wake up, whether you put it next to your bed or where I used to um, tape mine where I brush my teeth in the bathroom, literally on my mirror, on a three by five card, I will write out my godly beliefs. Okay. So you are no longer striving and surviving in a place of, of a taskmaster spirit to a master. Now you're going to rest in peace and function from the anointing and serve out of a place, not of obligation and burden, but out of a place of love. Okay. If you say things like, oh, if I don't, if I do this, I'm, if I don't do this, I'm going to get in trouble or, um, uh, that's like a child with their father or their mother. You get what I mean? That was abused. Or if we if we say things like, um, well, I got to do it because they want me to do it. No, I believe that, yes, there's submission to our leadership. Absolutely. But if you're doing it because somebody's making you do it, but you're not doing it out of place of love or grace, you're in the, that's the wrong spirit. Amen. And God wants to heal and deliver you from that. So I want you to ask Holy Spirit right now. And we're just going to take a moment. I'm going to just pray in the spirit. And I just want you to write down. What is it that he's given you in exchange of the orphan spirit? Amen. Yes, Lord, I submit to you. Amen. So I want you to write this down. I want you to write this down. Rest, <coughs> acceptance, love, and fun adventure. Amen. Excuse me, and fun adventure. Amen. So I want you to pray right now, and I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit to show you what is it that He wants to give you in exchange for what you're giving Him right now. You just you just got rid of all that orphan lifestyle, that orphan heart. You understand the triggers. You understand how the enemy would try to come with these little things, these little schemes that he does. But now you know the truth and the truth has made you free. So now you're going to walk differently. You're going to walk in rest and acceptance and love and go on this fun adventure with the Holy Ghost. Amen. So I want you to write down and I want you to put down, Father, I receive from you and I thank you, Holy Spirit, that in exchange of the orphan spirit, the fear, the shame, the control, I lay that down at your feet and I receive by faith from you right now in Jesus name. And I want you to uh, write down what is it that God is showing you? Write down what he's showing you right now. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. What is it that he's showing you? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. You're going to make an exchange right now. Amen. Yes. She said, I receive compassion from you. Absolutely. And the gifts are moved by compassion. So the enemy will want you not to have compassion because he doesn't want you to be used by God in the giftings, but he's a liar. So now that you're being set free and you're receiving by faith the compassion that he has for you. And Father, I agree right now for Marie, Lord, I declare and decree that she will walk in the compassion of Jesus Christ, Father God. And I thank you, Lord, for the breakthrough that's coming in Jesus name, in Jesus name. Amen. Okay. So now, as we went through the sins of the fathers and resulting curses, we're going to go ahead and write down, um, we're going to counsel vows that we have made. We're going to counsel some vows that we have made. Some of the vows would be, I will not allow anyone to control me again. I will do it my way. I will not submit to another person. I will never let anyone hurt me again. I will never trust anyone again. These are all vows that got to be broken. They are all I wills. I am setting my own will to do this. I am being my own God. Woo, you're being your own God. Come on. No, we don't want that. I know you don't want that. Amen. So take these or anything, uh, any other things and pray about them and break the vows. You can use your ministry guides to do that. And so you're going to break vows in your own words. So you're going to go before God and break the vows. Amen. So I'm going to share with you the ungodly beliefs is asking the Holy Spirit to show you 
what particular ungodly beliefs that you have about being an orphan. Then break them and get new godly beliefs. Amen. And so you're going to break those ungodly beliefs and get new godly beliefs. So let's go to the next one. SSH, which is a soul spirit hurts. It says, look for where the, the hurt came in, where rebellion came in. When you look at your parents' faults and judge them. Ouch. Sometimes we look at our parents' faults and we judge them, right? You gotta say no, you don't you don't get to do that, right? You don't get to do that. Sometimes we do that, we look at our parents' fault and we begin to judge them. Or we start disowning them and we become our own parent taking care of ourselves. We cut them off as our parents because we feel like, no, nah, that I, I can't do that, right? So let's go to um, breaking off illegitimacy. Let's go to Deuteronomy 23 and 2. And I'm reading from the Amplified. It says, a person of illegitimate birth shall not enter the assembly of the Lord, none of his descendants, even to the 10th generation. Ouch. Amen. Amen. All right. So what we start to do when we cut our parents off, we close off our heart and our spirit to them where you made a decision and became independent where I can do it by myself. So we need to ask the Lord, at what moment did I cease being a son or a daughter? And the Holy Spirit will show you. And that is where you want to do the soul spirit healing. So we need to ask the Lord to show you, ask the spirit of God to show you, to show you what the moment was that uh, was the case where you felt like you were not being a son or a daughter. At what moment did you cease? Okay, so just think about that. Write it down. And I'm going to read John 14 and 18. And it says, I will not leave you as orphans. He will send the Holy Spirit to you. Amen. He will not leave you in a storm. He will come to you, Jesus said. Amen. He loves, loves, loves you. He loves you so much. Thank you, Father. Amen. All right, so let's go to... Um, Demonic oppression. We're going to go through demonic oppression. So we learned the basic four ministry areas. And so I want to make sure that you guys know those. That's the sins of the fathers result in curses, ungodly beliefs. That is um, uh, uh, demonic oppression and soul spirit hurts. Those are the four different areas. Okay. So you have the four different areas. And you want to apply them in your life in different situations. So right now we were affecting the orphan spirit and we were doing RTF on the orphan spirit. Some major headings are fear, control, rebellion, abandonment, victor, victim, anger, interdependence, fatherlessness, the orphan spirit, jealousy, and a whole lot more shame, deception, orphan, forgiveness, unforgiveness, bitterness, and any others that show the Holy Spirit shows you. OK, so I want to go after this um, orphan thing right now. Let's go after this orphan spirit. If you guys want to do that? Let's do that right now. Amen. In the name of Jesus, we thank God for that. Amen. And so we're going to go after the orphan spirit and the illegitimacy. OK, and so illegitimacy means it feels fake or not real with others or God. You're hindering your salvation. There's a false face and presence about yourself and as you're better off than you really are. Integrity and same time acknowledge, acknowledge it and break curses of illegitimacy. So you want to come against that. When I'm praying, if that's something that you're walking through or you walk through, then you, you call that out and you can still call out uh, what we're breaking off with the orphan spirit, okay? Because God's whole plan is that you would enjoy creation, the mountains, the streams, that you get to see his creation through your eyes and you can't see it like you. You enjoy it and you're going to enjoy it what he has created for you. He says that you are the church. You are the firstborn, the ecclesia. And the father is wanting to just set people free from different things that have come against you, whether it's been um, decisions that you had to make, different people in your family being sick, different things like um, the father abandoning us for alcohol. Think about that. Think about that. If you have a father who was an alcoholic, did he abandon you for alcohol? 
So then you may have an issue with that, right? Or no finances. There was no finances to buy clothes or meals or you felt poor, right? So you had to get a job to take care of yourself, right? And so it was like, I could do bad all by myself. That whole thing that comes in, I've, I, we've broken that off before too. Yes, Lord. So Father, we just thank you right now. We're going to go ahead and just break off this orphan spirit and we're going to wrap up y'all. It's 10 o'clock. And so I just want you to get in a place where you can go through and we're just going to go straight into it. We're going to break off the orphan spirit off our bloodline and then we're going to do the demonic oppression tonight. We're not going to walk through the spirit so hurts. You guys can do that in your own time if you want to. And that's just basically sitting with the Holy Spirit and you're asking him to come in to heal whatever emotion, if it's anger, if it's rage, if it's fear, whatever you're feeling, you're repenting and renouncing that emotion. You're giving it to God and allowing him to come in to show you. Some people want to go back to wherever the entry point is. You can do that if you feel led to do that, right? But I don't feel like you're supposed to walk the person back through the trauma. Absolutely not. Amen. I do not believe that. All right. So let's keep going. I confess my sins of my fathers, my ancestors, my parents, and my own sins of the orphan lifestyle, including jealousy, <coughs> self-independence. Rebellion, competition, <coughs> I choose to forgive and release my ancestors as well as all others who have influenced me from these sins and these curses and from all the consequences in my life. Now, I want you to take a moment and ask Holy Spirit to show you and just say the names out loud of whoever the people are. It may have been your mom, your dad. It could have been whoever it was. And just release them right now to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We just thank you, Lord. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. I ask you to forgive me, Lord. For these sins. For yielding to them and to the curses. And I just want you to really take a moment and just say, I receive your forgiveness. It's so big to forgive yourself. Sometimes we're so busy forgiving everybody else, we, forgive, we forget to forgive ourselves for maybe some mistakes or things that we did not know. And whether we knew it or we didn't know, you still need to love yourself and forgive yourself. Amen? How can you love your neighbor as yourself if you don't love yourself? Amen? How can you take care of you if you're still beating yourself up about a decision you made or something that you did, right? God's grace is there for you. Amen? But don't stay in that place. Come out of it. Make the change. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So just say, Lord, I ask you to forgive me for these sins, for yielding to them and the curses. I receive your forgiveness on the basis of your forgiveness, Lord. I choose to forgive myself for entering into these sins. I renounce the sins and curses of the orphan spirit. I break these powers from my life and from the lives of my descendants through the redemptive work of Christ on the cross. I receive God's freedom from these sins and resulting curses. And I want you to ask the Lord to show you right now, what do you receive from him? I receive, he, so you're giving him that orphan spirit and he's giving you an exchange. What is it that you receive from him? For me, I receive the spirit of adoption where I can cry out, Abba, Papa, that's my daddy, amen, where I can cry out to him. There's nothing, no shame, there's no fear, there's no guilt, there's no condemnation. I am free, amen. I receive freedom and liberty, Lord. I'm your daughter, your precious daughter that you love so much. Favor and blessings chase after me. They make it rich and add no sorrow. Amen. Thank you, Lord. 
mercy and goodness shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Start declaring and decreeing things over yourself right now. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. What do you receive from him? Write it down because that's your godly belief that you're going to put on your window or in your car dash on the three by five card or on your phone as a daily reminder, whatever you need to do. And you're going to say it every day for 30 days. Amen. So today is uh, the 12th of March until April 12th. All right. So I confess my sins of an orphan spirit in illegitimacy and forgive all who influence me to sin. I repent for giving place to demons of the orphan spirit and illegitimacy. I forgive myself for the pain and the limitations I have allowed the demons to inflict upon me. In the name of Jesus, say it like you mean it, in the name of Jesus, I renounce and I break all agreements with demonic strongholds of the orphan heart and the orphan spirit and the orphan lifestyle, including every associated demon. I take authority over all demonic strongholds of the orphan spirit. And I command this stronghold and all associated demons to leave me now based on the finished work of Christ on the cross and my authority as a believer. So right now, I want you to use your authority right now in the name of Jesus. This is your self-deliverance. Orphan spirit, go now in Jesus' name. Loose me out of my bloodline, out, out right now. I call you out, out of me. You have no place in me. I break all agreement with every orphan heart, every orphan spirit, every illegitimate spirit out of me in Jesus' name out in the name of Jesus. You okay? Yeah. okay? Out in the name of, I'll just make you sure. Yeah, sure too. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So if you feel like any anxiety, you feel like your tummy doing anything, you feel like you need to throw up or headache, anything like that, just keep praying out in the name of Jesus. You take authority over, you have authority over yourself. You have authority right now in Jesus name. You're going to break off all of those lies in Jesus name. So, Father, let me just pray for you guys before we close out. Father, I just thank you right now in the name of Jesus that every spirit, every orphan spirit, every orphan heart, every all orphan lifestyles will cease now in Jesus name. I command every demonic orphan spirit to break off your people. Right now, Father, I just ask that there be a resounding, Father God, a resounding sound in the name of Jesus that will cast that spirit out of the bloodlines of every household right now under the sound of my voice. I command every demonic principality that has been sent against them in the name of Jesus to keep them bound in an orphan heart to be broken now in Jesus' name. Say you have no legal right any longer. I bind every rejection, every abandonment go in Jesus name. Let them go right now in Jesus name. I declare and decree freedom and breakthrough. They are loved by God. They rest in the peace of God. They don't serve a taskmaster. They love their father and they move out of love. They move out of love. They serve out of love. They serve ministry out of love. They serve the kingdom out of the love of God. Hallelujah. Not out of an obligate. You're not obligated to do anything. All you're obligated to do is love God and love people. Amen. That's it. And love yourself. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you, Jesus, for everything that you're doing right now, God. And I just ask right now, let's just ask Holy Spirit to just fill us up, overflow. In the mighty name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, I ask that you would go to every house every house right now, every car, every phone, through every airway right now with your holy fire. And I ask that you will begin to fill up every place where there's emptiness, every place, Father God, 
I just saw the spirit of uh, where the enemy has tried to come and even bring like this thing where the women in your family just do not get along. That spirit of misogyny, we break your assignment off of women in Jesus name. That daughters and mothers and sisters and aunts and cousins will love each other and walk in the love of God. I break off that spirit of misogyny now out of these bloodlines in Jesus' name. If that's you, just repent and renounce it right now and tell it to go. God calls you to love your family. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Whew. I can just fill buckets. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And Father, I just pray right now for whoever that was that had a dog situation that just take place. Father, I pray, God, for safety over the dog or the dogs, Lord. And I just pray, God, that you would cover them and that you would heal them, Father, quickly, whatever they're going through, Father God. And I just pray, Father God, that you will have those dogs in the perfect place they need to be, Father. I just thank you for that right now in Jesus' holy name. In Jesus' holy name, amen, amen. God bless you guys. I thank you guys for hopping on tonight. We're going to wrap up. We're already 17 minutes over. I thank you guys for getting on tonight. Please, if you feel any of these things trying to come back to attack, oh yeah, pray for Aaron. Mama Zella Sunny has court tomorrow. He has court tomorrow, amen. Thank you, Jesus. I love you guys. God bless you. You're so welcome. I love you guys so much. If you guys feel led, if you want to sew, the website is on there. I'm not going to make a big fuss about that. This is not why we do this. But if you want to sew into this work, please go to the website. We're not going to do the sewing into Deborah's Arising right now. I want to focus on KAC Hub and making sure that this move and everything that we have, that um, all the seeds go there. Amen. So if you could go to uh, kachub.com. Please give there. You can give there online. We thank you for your giving. I pray that the blessings of the Lord will make it rich and add no sorrow. I pray that God will give you double for your shame, double for your trouble. Amen. And that you will step into a new season of divine reversals at everything that tried to hold you back in the past seasons, that you will get up and walk in what God has called you to walk in. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you guys. Sweet sleep. Sweet sleep, sister. God bless you. I love you guys. Have a good night and I'll see you next week. Amen.